Hey, this is Mad Hatter here, and today I'm gonna go through a bunch of features of what I consider the best Minecraft technical resource pack out there. This is a resource pack. It does not disable achievements. It doesn't change the way the game works. It only changes the way that armor stands in the player's render, and it allows you to see a lot of things that would normally be invisible to you in the world, but it shows you how they work. First off, this doesn't actually have any reference to the game inside of it. It is just based upon where you place the armor stand, and if you are placing it in a spot that is sensible, it will show you how these things work. This is going to be kind of a big recap and roll up, and some of these things are on other videos. If there's another video that has the information, the link will be in the iCards, and I'll call it out then. So first off, let's get some things out. We're going to want rockets and we're gonna want Nautilus shell. So the first thing that this pack does is when you're in third person or you're looking at somebody else, if they have a rocket in their offhand, you get chunk borders. Chunk borders are hugely important for technical things like redstone and whatnot. So having the chunk borders known to you is really, really helpful. Second thing, if you put a Nautilus shell in your offhand and most people don't even know about that, it shows you where the slime chunks are. So if I go up, you can see all of the slime chunks around me start to render. And if you go down, they follow you at your feet, tied to your feet. So now you can figure out where to build your slime farm and you can mark out your chunks however you need to for your other builds. But that is just where it starts to get fun. So now that we know where the chunk borders are, there's some other really important things that you should be aware of when you're playing the game. The first, is the spawn radius. This gives you the spawn radius for Sim 4. Uh, Sim 6 and Sim 8 and Sim 10 are a fair bit different. They go all the way up to 128 blocks up and all the way down to 128 blocks down, and then they're related to the ticking area. I have a mob spawning video that gets you started on how mob spawning works in Sim 4, but you can see these are the radiuses. The next thing that you're gonna want to know is ticking area. Like I said, Sim 4, only the things in this first yellow area actually are simulated. Everything else is not running. In Sim 6, you could see out there, that is where the extra two chunks live. Sim 8, Sim 10, and Sim 12, you can kind of see those popping up on the outside. This also tells you north south, east, and west, so you can use those to figure out your cardinal directions if you need to do that. And I get that by putting a stick. Stick rhymes with, or stick sounds like tick, and it is the ticking area one. All of these items that you put in the armor stands offhand are on the wiki. The link to the wiki for this pack is in the description. So if you need to check these later, you're welcome to do that. Other one that is really important when I'm playing is density area. This one, there is another video that I have done. It is part of the mob spawning video. It explains it much better there. But basically, if a mob was going to try to spawn right here, the armor stand is standing, it checks all of the area in red to see if there's another mob of that type or if there's too many mobs to spawn a new mob. Okay, if you wanna do stuff with villagers, like make an iron farm, make a raid farm, or any of that sort of stuff, this is how you work out where the center of the village is. First, you go around and you break all of the beds and you place a bed down. And depending on which villager is at the top of the list, which is really confusing to know, so just know that you probably need to account for the best case and worst case bed. You go, you put the armor stand on the pillow, and then you place a poppy in the hand. This pink box in the middle is where iron golems will spawn. They will spawn only in this volume, assuming you get the right bed. I have a skyblock episode where I go over this in more detail. And then also raids will start the second you cross this yellow box. So this is your raid trigger distance. It's really handy to do this when you're setting up raid farms or iron farms just to see what's going on. That's done with a poppy or an iron bar in their hand. If you are doing a raid farm and you want to know how far pillagers look for villagers, 
So the way that this one works is you put an, a crossbow in the armor stand's hand. It shows you if there is a villager here, how far away will the different pillager mobs look at them? So this blue green, this is Vindicators, the guys with the axe. They will target the villager from anywhere inside of this radius. This pink radius is where pillagers and ravagers will target from. So the pillagers and ravagers will attack from anywhere inside the pink or cyan colored regions. And then evokers can see the furthest. They will attack from anywhere inside of the orange region. They will see a villager. So this helps you if you wanted to do something fancy with the pillager AI and work on a sort of silly raid farm. So this is a pillager outpost. And the way you can figure out where the pillagers will spawn is you find the door, and this would be the door. You place the armor stand facing the door. You take one of the banners off and you put it in the hand. And you can see this is where the pillagers will spawn. And this little square in the, in the corner, this is the actual corner they'll spawn on. So if you put a piece of glass here, it'll push them on, off instantly that direction. This particular pillager outpost has two spawn spots. You can see this one here and this one here. If you ended up facing the door in different directions, you will get different number of spawn spots, but the orientation of the armor stand will tell you that, and you make it so that the armor stand is walking out of the door. Stand on the inside of the outpost and then face out of the door to figure out where the pillager spawn spots are. At. In a similar way to the pillager outpost, you can actually figure out where the spawn spot for the witch is in the witch hut. You just go inside and you place down the armor stand. You put sugar in the armor stand's hand and it will tell you where the witch will spawn. Here we are over in Ocean Monument and here if you place an armor stand anywhere in the center chunk and you put something in the armor stand's hand it will show you the all of the blocks and the entire extent for which guardians spawn so you don't need to count out where they go it just tells you where they are rotation and orientation doesn't matter however if you put it in the wrong chunk like if you put it over here it will tell you the wrong spawn spot so just got to get it within this center area if you are setting up a farm and you want to know how far does the water extend? You can put a bucket of water in the armor stand's hand and all of the green area will be hydrated. It's really handy for working on farms with a lot of uh, water so you can put the armor stands in the perfect ideal space so you can get the highest efficiency for planting crops. In the same way, sugar, sugar cane has a interesting way it is planted. So if I grab a piece of sugar cane, it will show you the optimal sugarcane water spacing in Minecraft. So if you place each one of these full of water, you can plant sugarcane in all of the green spots. It doesn't get more dense than this per unit area. This is the optimal way to lay out sugarcane watering for one chunk. Speaking of AI things, if you put a piece of rotten flesh or a turtle egg, in the armor stand's hand, you will see the radius for which zombie piglins and zombies will target a turtle egg. So anywhere inside of this radius, a zombie or a or a zombie piglin will try to stomp on the turtle egg where the armor stand is standing. And continuing on the AI front, if you put gunpowder in the armor stand's hand, this is the scare radius information so if you have a cat in here or a dog in here cats will scare creepers as long as they start inside of the yellow area and they will run outside of the orange area and dogs will scare skeletons as long as they're inside of the yellow area and then the skeletons will flee to outside of the orange area so if you are doing mob filtering and you want to separate zombies from uh, skeletons and creepers, you can use these sort of patterns to do that. 
And last but not least, this is the Enderman information. So what this does is if you have an Endermite, all of the Endermen inside of the Cyan area will aggro on the Endermite and try to kill it. If you make a Enderman teleport and he is standing on this block, the Enderman will only teleport within the pink bounding box. So the Cyan bounding box is the aggro for Endermite, which is quite far, and the pink box is their teleport active region. And if you want to just light up, but you don't want to use as many light blocks or torches, this is the torch lighting area for a single torch with the zero light level that we have in the current version of Minecraft. So these orange, they can kind of end up being a little bit weird in the orange areas. It's recommended just to overlight a little bit, but on these orange areas, if you're stepping down or stepping up, it can make a difference whether the light covers. On the flat, this is a torch covers for area. Now another one that is actually pretty useful, but is generally most useful when you're doing a mob farm of some sort, is blocking spiders. In the case of spiders, there is a pattern that is most efficient for blocking the spider spawns, and that's by putting a button on every single one of these red spots here. That will be the optimal spacing for blocking spider spawns in Bedrock. Another one that might be interesting for dealing with mobs is the mob spawner. For this one, you're gonna use string. This is a little bit to look at, but if you have a mob spawner active, the monster will spawn in any of the cyan area. It will then count the monsters inside of the green area and prevent spawns if there's any monsters in the green area. And it will look for a player inside of the pink area to see if it should spawn monsters. So you see, just inside of the pink area, it counts. So if you put the armor stand on top, it will do this nice display for you. I hope that you can use this. I know that there's more things that we could add to this pack. I would love if other people can contribute to this pack and make it better. I don't call this the Hatter Pack. This is just a pack that I work on. This is the Bedrock Technical Resource Pack. And anyone who wants to contribute to it and make it better is more than welcome to. So with that in mind, if you want to download this or use this, the links are in the description. The wiki is, link is in the description. And if you really liked it, do sub, really want to tell me something about this pack, please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear how you used it and how it made your life better. Anyway, this is Matt Hatter and I'm I.